Hi everyone, so I'm going to continue now talking about how we actually represent the wave function and remember we're talking specifically about how to represent the square of the wave function psi square which corresponds to the probability of finding the electron at a given location or position or, uh, around the nucleus, okay? And remember that the um, psi square represents the probability so as a result we have to visualize or represent this probability and the first way to represent the probability is to use this dot density or electron dot density right now we talked about the 1s and 2s orbitals in the previous video so I just want to show you here you know basically a collection of different orbitals that are represented by this dot density right we talked about the 1s and the 2s remember I mentioned that for the 2s there is a node in between if you go to the 3s it's again just a bigger orbital uh, but uh, the shape is exactly the same because they're all s orbitals but if you look at the 2s now you have two nodes which are these white areas uh, indicating that there's zero probability of finding the electron there we're gonna look at some more orbitals later on but here's just kind of an, a preview of some of them uh, p orbitals they usually look like this dumbbell shape so if you actually plot the electron density dot you see something that looks like this right here this picture right here where you see a lot of probability you know around this area and around this area because that's the darkest part of it but then as you go further as you can see that you have less and less probability of finding the electron but you see that right around the nucleus you actually have a node um, it's completely white here right in the middle of the nucleus so uh, so you actually have zero probability of finding it right next to the nucleus but then it's the distance is somewhere around here okay and as you remember from our discussion in quantum numbers there's three different orientation of the p orbitals so there is a p orbital that orient on the um, y-axis there's one that orients on the x-axis and there's one that orients on the on the z-axis so they all have the same shape which is this dumbbell shape it's just that you know they're oriented in the different axis okay and then we would talk about d orbitals uh, briefly but here's just the shapes of the d orbitals you can see that they're more complex in terms of shape in comparison to the p or the s um, one of the things i want to point out uh, for both the p and the d orbitals is you notice that maybe it's a little hard for you to see but there's a plus sign here and there's a negative sign here so plus and minus sign those correspond to the phases of the waves um, that are uh, part of the wave function for the p orbital and the d orbital. In the d orbital you can see here for example like this particular d orbital uh, there's a plus sign on this one, there's plus sign on this lobe, there's a negative and negative on the other one. So those again correspond to the phases of the waves. Uh, remember that for a wave you sometimes you have a, a phase that's above the uh, zero line which is the positive phase and then sometimes you have the one that's below the positive uh, the zero line which is the negative phase so that's just corresponding to those phases um, this plus and negative actually become important later on when we're talking about bonding uh, in molecules so it you know so when we talk about bonding we'll talk about overlap of orbitals and it actually matters whether you're overlapping positive with positive or positive with negative so again this becomes important later but right now I just want to point this out so you'll remember it when we discuss when we discuss molecular orbital later on you'll remember that there is this positive and negative for the p orbitals okay so that's the um, orbital the density dot representation of the orbital now I want to talk about the second way that people you usually represent uh, probability density of the electron and this is referred to as the radial probability representation and this is really just a plot okay so instead of a, of a drawing like the one that we just saw with the density dot representation this is just a drawing the drawing here is of this plot where you have on the x-axis distance from the nucleus which is r that's r in the remember uh, a couple of videos ago I talked about the spherical polar coordinates so R is basically a measure of the distance from the from the origin to a particular point uh, a distance away from from the origin and the origin here is always the nucleus so R represents the distance from the nucleus um, 
the y-axis here represents something called total radial probability. Okay, so we, we're going to discuss a little bit what this means, but that's what it is, and uh, that's that's what the y-axis is. And if you look at this plot, what this plot is saying is basically probability uh, at at the nucleus, which is at zero. Uh, distance is zero, right? There's no probability. The plot goes down, and then it it very sharply increases to this maximum probability at a distance that's 52.9 picometers. If you, some of you pay attention to the previous video, you remember this distance was that a naught distance that I talked about, but I'll mention it again here. And then the probability then uh, decreases as we go further and further away from the nucleus, right? So we're going, you know, R gets bigger here. And then at some point, the probability just decreases completely to uh, approaching zero as R goes to infinity, okay? So um, let's talk a little bit about what this, this part, the y-axis here means. So the radial probability value, this total radial probability, you can get that number by multiplying psi square, remember that psi square is the probability itself, with a spherical shell volume element. And what that means is that if you imagine you're standing on a point here in the nucleus, okay? So let's say I'm, I'm here at the, at the uh, nucleus, and I go a certain distance away, certain distance r away, okay? So let's say I go to this point right here and I say, what is my probability of finding the electron at this position, okay? So that gives me psi square at that particular position. But the radial probability is if I were to add all the probability of finding the electron around a spherical shell from that same distance. So in other words, I would cut this, I would cut this, um, uh, I would cut this orbital, okay? A certain distance r away and I would add the all the probability of finding the electron from each r position okay from the same r distance when I add all of those together then I get my total radial probability okay another way to think about this is to look at a, a picture of an onion okay so if you look at an onion this is kind of a model of the atom right in the middle is my nucleus right and you notice that if I go a certain distance away, let's say I go a distance r away, okay, which is this distance right here, I can calculate the probability, which is the psi square at that particular r value. The total radial probability is not just the r, the psi square value at that r, but it's adding this particular shell. So if you follow my mouse here, I'm going around at that same r value, okay, and I'm adding all the probability that I calculated together. And then I get one number, and that number represents my radial probability at that distance r, okay, because I'm adding all of these shell up. And then I can go to the next shell, and then add all the probability from that shell. And then I go to the next shell, add the probability from that shell, and so on, okay? So hopefully that onion analogy clear, clears up the how we actually obtain this value of radial probability and mathematically the way you're gonna get it for something like a, a s orbital would be to multiply psi square remember psi square corresponds to probability times this is the volume slice or the shell volume okay it's 4 pi r square dr so this is really you know if you think about it it's very similar to basically surface area times times the thickness of the shell so this is the surface area, and then this is the thickness of the shell, okay, which is dr. dr is just delta r is kind of the, 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 the you know, basically how thick that particular volume, sh uh, volume shell is, volume slice. Um, and the way the math works is that if we go to r equals infinity, you can see that the value of r here goes bigger and bigger, but at the same time, remember that when you go further and further away, the probability goes down and it goes down by a lot so as r goes to approaches infinity the psi square value goes down and approaches zero in such a way that when you multiply those two numbers together you basically get radial probability equal to zero or close to zero and that's what we see in this part of the of the plot on the other hand when you r goes to zero which means that we're going towards the nucleus right when r is uh, closer to zero the psi square actually 
goes up tremendously and get close to infinity okay but again the way the math works out is that when r is you know r goes to zero a lot more than psi square goes to infinity so the r always overpowers the psi square uh, when it goes to zero in such a way that the radial probability is actually approaching zero as well so in other words that's why you see this line going to zero so initially you you know it, it goes the maximum probability goes up but as r goes to zero eventually the r function takes over and the it goes to zero faster than the psi square goes to infinity okay so then as a result the overall you get a zero value right here but in between these two extremes in between the r equals infinity and r equals zero we have a distance where there is maximum probability okay when the r when the slice volume slice multiplied by psi square gives you a maximum number and that maximum number is located here at this distance and that distance is 52.9 picometers now remember what this this distance uh, was the distance i mentioned earlier when i talk about the the uh, convergence between the bohr model and the quantum model remember that bohr was able to calculate uh, Bohr was able to calculate the value for his n equals 1 uh, radius, the distance to the n equals 1 radius for the Bohr model, and he calculated that value to be 52.9 picometers. So again, what's so interesting about this is the fact that using the Bohr model and using the quantum model, we both obtain exactly the same value for the location of the electron, basically. Uh, except that with the quantum model, this is representing the probability, the highest probability of finding the electron is at this location. With the Bohr model, because it's a particle model, you would have just said that the electron is always located there. But with the quantum model, it's saying that, well, that's where you're most likely to find the electron, but you can also find the electron at, you know, 100 picometers away. It's just that the probability is a lot lower okay you can also find it at 200 picometers away it's also but the probability is very very low at that point okay so that's the radial probability representation of psi square in the next video we're going to talk about the radial probability representation of other wave functions um you know 2s 2p and so on